in San Luigi de Francesi in Rome. A couple of blocks from the Piazza Navona. As soon as we walked in, I was immediately struck by the smell of incense. Most people here seem to be interested in one chapel. There's a, a large crowd of people in front of this chapel. Which is the last chapel on the left, towards the altar. It's a pretty typical Baroque chapel. It's got different colored marble. A beautiful barrel vault. And paintings by Caravaggio. Which is really the draw. And there's probably about 20 or 30 people at any one time standing and taking pictures. Jockeying for position. Yeah. And one of the issues is, is the most famous of the three paintings is on the left side of the chapel. And so you see it at a, at a very foreshortened angle. We look up at it. I'm struck by the very dark and seedy looking environment yeah. of the setting for the painting, for the calling of St. Matthew. But the space of the chapel is, ornate is incredibly and brilliant. ornate. It's really strikingly different. Okay, so it's the calling of St. Matthew. It is this moment when Christ, who's seen as the tall figure on the extreme right, the younger figure, with just the barest halo visible, enters in, flanked by St. Peter, the shock of light that comes down and almost divides the canvas in two diagonally. And leads our eye directly to that figure of St. Matthew, who's pointing to himself, saying, Could it saying be me? to Christ, are you, are you pointing? to me? Or are, you, are you addressing me? He seems really incredulous, actually, he does. doesn't he? One of the figures seems to sort of notice what's going on, the figure with the white feather on top of his cap. And but the, nobody else seems to no be paying attention. No one else does, no. The other figures are counting their money, because, of course, St. Matthew was a, a tax collector. So there's a sense of people going on about their everyday business, which is kind of mundane and maybe even a little bit kind of greedy and seedy, yeah. Yeah. while this incredible moment of spirituality is, is happening. And the lights just went off. Right? Something that happens. Hold on, let's put some money in. Okay. Okay, there we go. Light is back on. So this painting is in some ways really a complicated mix of the physical, the actual, and the spiritual. It's interesting to me how Caravaggio has lit Christ. So we've got that shadow coming right below Christ's eye. And illuminating the neck brilliantly, the cheekbone brilliantly. Right, adding to that sense of Christ's physicality. This is a world that worshipers live in. Not the sort of the heavenly world that we create in our churches, but the world outside. So there are people who, you know, they're, they're, they're making money, they've bought themselves some nice, some nice clothing, they're very worldly figures. Then you have this moment of spiritual calling. That happens a lot in Baroque art, this merging of the real and the divine, the divine intrusion, in a way, into the real world. Let's spend a moment talking about the painting of Matthew in the center. of. This is an image that we see very often of uh, one of the evangelists writing his gospel and being inspired by an angel. But in typical Caravaggio fashion, this, this doesn't really look all that divine in a way. <laughs> No, it's almost an editor harassing his, his writer. It does yeah. look like that, right? It looks almost like the angel is pointing to his fingers. He's and, enumerating and the enumer points. Right. Yes, exactly. Did you talk about this? Did you talk about that? <laughs> Don't forget this. Right, and Matthew <laughs> turns away and looks back, and is, it sort of looks like, all right, by the responsibility. I'm, I'm writing, I'm writing, you know, I've got it. <laughs> but the colors are just beautiful, that orange is, and gold of his clothing. Also, what I'm really struck by is all of the open space of the canvas. I mean, it's so spare. He's given the figure so much room to move, mm -hmm. right? And the angel really needs it. I'm not sure Matthew needs quite as much. No, but, but it, it sort of helps him seem more harassed. It I does. Think. All that empty it does. space around him and that the white of the angel's drapery sweeping down. I like his foreshortened elbow poking out into our space, it's, it's too. A, it's the, the understanding of the movement of the body, the way in which the gesture really expresses the psychology. It's, it's incredible. There's nothing idealized no, about him at all. And actual, yeah, absolutely. Someone you could know. Down to the feet.